just love and respect Ryan. Uh, we've learned a lot from his struggle since the last time we've been here. He's inspired us. Hopefully he's inspired many outside of us. You know, walking off the field um, with him was emotional. Um, just because, you know, obviously what, what happened and uh, what he means to us and this team. I mean, everything about Ryan is inspiring. I mean, besides the injury, he was inspiring before the injury. So now it just adds to it. And yes, it was a good trip to Cincinnati. Ryan Shazier, of course, returning to the stadium where he was injured last year in December, able to walk out on his own power. Definitely a motivational uh, effort in terms of what the team was able to do yesterday. And joining me today on Steelers Live to recap the Steelers win over the Bengals, Bob Labriola and Tunch Ilkin. And I wanted to start with Ryan because, as Coach Tomlin and all of his teammates said, this was so much bigger than the game of football. You know, I, I, to, to go back to where it happened, I think for Ryan, it must have been very emotional uh, to go to the hospital and see the doctors and the nurses that uh, uh, treated him. But uh, you're right. I mean, it, there, there was an emotion uh, in this football game that, uh, that would not have been there if it wasn't for the circumstances uh, there. So, you know, just seeing Ryan and, you know, I got a chance to uh, run into him in the lobby uh, late, for, uh, late Saturday night. And, and I asked him about uh, uh, when he went uh, to the hospital and see, he said, man, it was great. Those people were so wonderful and it was just great hanging out with them and great seeing them. And then, you know, you could tell that the guys had a little bit uh, extra juice uh, in, uh, in their kind of uh, uh, emotion uh, playing the Cincinnati Bengals in Cincinnati. In Cincinnati. And I think uh, it kind of sustained them throughout the course of the afternoon. You know, the thing about uh, Ryan Shazier is that He's still part of this team, and this is not like a mascot kind of designation part of the team. Uh, he actually, he's, he comes to the uh, UPMC Rooney Sports Complex every day that, you know, the, the team has some sort of activity here. I uh, he watch his film yeah. a lot of times. He's you know, here with, early. Right, yeah. with yeah. you and Wolf. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he helps uh, the linebackers. He helps other players. I, I would describe him, though, a little bit more as a mentor right. than as an assistant coach, uh, because while they're both helping, they're kind of helping in, in different ways. And, you know, Ryan Shazier is still very much a part of what happens here, good and or bad. And, um, you know, I, I just think that him being able to go back to Paul Brown Stadium, still as a part of this team, to be able to walk into that uh, facility as opposed to the way he left it the last time he was there um, had to be, as you both said, uh, an emotional thing. I also think it was uplifting uh, to his teammates and the coaches and the entire Steelers family just because uh, of how far he has come. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of these firsts, I think, in Ryan Shazier's life slash professional career this season. Uh, first home game, you know, first trip here, first trip there, whatever. But going back to the to the scene of his injury, I think had to be a big one. And um, I'm sure that there were some tears shed. Uh, and to be able to leave there with a victory um, and, a, and a, one that was a little too exciting, you know, for my heart. <laughs> um, but to, to achieve that that way, I, I think had to be gratifying for him as it was for everyone else in terms of how it likely impacted. Yeah, and, and the fact that in pregame, he led him in the uh, Who Ride cheer, you know, okay. the, when the yeah. Joy Party used to Who Ride, We Ride, uh, and he was just fired up, and the guys were fired up. It was fun. You know, it's just fun to, to see that video clip. And, and you know, uh, let's face it, uh, these kinds of stories inspire. Uh, they inspire teammates. They inspire coaches. They inspire everyone. Uh, who is part of the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, let's talk about the game and the big win that uh, made Labs a little little uneasy, but you were nervous. they got the W. No, I, I was Touch really confident. Touch is never nervous. You know what? I it, wasn't, it's I wasn't. A bad, after the touchdown, I said, don't worry, we got plenty of time. Three timeouts, a minute 18, uh, plenty of time for Ben. All right, we're going to talk about the game, I promise. <laughs> we have a lot to get to, so let's stay on track, guys. Let's take a look at the AFC North standings because the Steelers are above 500 for the first time this season. Of course, the Ravens won yesterday as well, so now they are tied with the Bengals. The Browns there down on the bottom, but 3-2-1, and one, finally 
that's a record that, you know, with that tie, it's as good as it's going to get as far as right now. Yeah, and, and now we've seen each of those teams once. Yeah. Uh, the Bengals, the Ravens, and the Browns. Um, I, I got to say that the team uh, that I think is going to pose the most uh, competition from here forward is the Ravens. What do you got? Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, the, the way they got after the quarterback yesterday, especially Zadarius uh, Smith has got, uh, has become a big time player. Uh, you know, last year he was uh, good and physical and strong and big, and but he just didn't make plays. He defeated his offensive lineman. Now, what is he? Six sacks, five sacks, something like that. He's. Uh, uh, I they all think have a lot three, of sacks. Yeah, they have. They you have get a lot eleven of at a time. Yeah, I'm sure that they have a bunch. But that that certainly uh, is setting up for that uh, game uh, in Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, the second game after the Steelers return from their bye, that's going to be a huge. That's going to be a tough one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't wait for that. And I, and I don't get, I, I, like Missy said, I don't get nervous in these games. I'm confident in this team. I, I see enough talent, enough wherewithal, enough focus, enough intensity, enough passion that uh, uh, I'm not worried. All right, let's talk about the game yesterday before we get too far ahead of ourselves. And I want to start with Vontez Perfect. We yeah. knew going in this was going to be a chippy game. These two teams always play physical, but there were some things I think that he did yesterday that uh, I think people are probably not too happy with. Maybe like, you know, say the O-line, who had a lot to say about that say in the locker room. What, what do you say, Tunch? You know what? I, I As I was watching the film, I saw a couple of shots that I didn't see during the game. Okay. Like uh, uh, one of the tackles uh, that he had – on, um, I think it was, was it James Conner? I, I don't know. He was, he was flowing to the ball, and he threw the elbow at the head, but he missed. <laughs> and, uh, and it skimmed the top of uh, James Conner's head. So I'm going, oh, look at that. He's, he's, he's given that, uh, that extracurricular activity, that extra shot. Uh, and, you know, there were a couple of times, you know, he hit uh, A-B, and, uh, you know, and then and he got driven back a couple of times. And, you know, I, I loved early in the game when Vance McElroy ran right through him. Vance uh, McDonald. Or Vance McDonald. Vance McElroy was the I'm safety. Here for, I'm here for you. Thank you. It was for, uh, safety of the Raiders. But, I mean, he, on that play, and I have, that was on the sideline of the press box. And uh, I had the binoculars on that. And uh, Vance McDonald uh, made perfect quit on yeah. that. He, he ran him over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Perfect, took himself out of the game, tapped out, got in Marvin Lewis's face on the sideline. They exchanged words. Uh, I could only see Perfect's face, and he was very animated. And then Perfect went over and sat on the bench by himself shortly after. They announced a shoulder injury, uh, but then he was able to come back later. So I don't know if it was just a cooling off period or he was embarrassed at getting run over by a tight end uh, or what it was. Um, but, I mean, there was no doubt in my mind Right that, there, there it is. Uh, that, uh, you know, again, <laughs> this is a guy, Vance McDonald is a guy who um, pe people who haven't played against him, you know, he played for the 49ers, so you don't know uh, who has, in terms of the AFC North, the teams that the Steelers uh, typically have on their schedule, how much, how much familiarity there is with a guy who played for the 49ers. But uh, I think that his reputation is getting around the league and these defensive players uh, who have come up to try and tackle this guy when he has the football in his hands and has a little bit of a head of steam going, um, you know, as they say, Tunch, what, buckle it up? To buckle straps? it up, man. You know, because let, let me tell you something about Vance McDonald. He reminds me of Ditka. Uh, Gronkowski. yeah, what's that? Gronkowski. Yeah, you know what? He plays a little more. He lowers his shoulder more than Gronk does. Gronk runs more upright. He lowers his shoulder a little bit more. And uh, you know what he did on, on Sunday? He set the tone. On the opening drive, that didn't result in any points, but it was like a seven-play drive, he had three catches for, for 30 yards. And so he set the tone with physicality. On that play that we watched where he ran through perfect, it took five guys to bring him down. Five guys to bring him down. So when you start with ace, with two tight ends, and you start running the ball, and then you start throwing to your tight end, especially your big tight end, uh, you know, the, the thicker of the two uh, in Vance McDonald, I mean, he runs over guys. He, he is a tone setter for physicality. Kind of similar to that Tampa game that yeah. sparked it. Yeah. All right, we are going to take a quick break. When we return, Tunch heads to the Telestrator for this week's edition of Chalk Talk, including the game winner. You don't want to miss this one.
All right, we always love Chalk Talk on a Victory Monday. Three plays <laughs> yes, today. Yes. You're going to finish with the go-ahead touchdown, so let's let's jump into it, Tunch. You know, Missy, um, one of the things that the Steelers did a great job of setting the tone with two tight ends. And in this situation, uh, they're at the 25-yard line, and they're going to run. This was my favorite play of the day. And we used to call this play Ride 38. And on the onside, you're going to see a dad block by the two tight ends, by uh, Grimble and by uh, Jesse James. Jesse's going to uh, post them up. Uh, Xavier's going to hit the hip, and then he's going to come off on Vontez Perfect. All right. Then David DeCastro is going to pull, and he is going to hook Sean Williams, uh, the strong safety. Now, if you notice, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys in the box. Then Marquise Pouncey is going to pull, and he is going to lead up on the corner, Darquez uh, Denard. And not many centers can pull with the athleticism that uh, Marquise Pouncey does. On, on the backside, uh, you're going to see Rosie Greer. He's going to cut uh, uh, Vigil. And then uh, you're going to see uh, our, our, our buddy James Conner take the ball and just uh, run right to it. And they ran this about four or five times, and every time they gained at least five, six yards. So there it is. That's the first block on, uh, on Sean Williams. Here's the second block. Nice job. Look at that. Now, uh, to, to be quite honest with you, Darque Twez, Darquez Denard gives himself up here. He might as well throw up the white flag. Uh, he just do dove. And great job by uh, David DeCastro. He gets two. Not only does he get Sean Williams, but he also uh, picks off uh, Vontez Perfect. And then uh, there we go. Off to the races. And, you know, I, I just love to watch James Conner run. Now, we're going to take a look at this uh, uh, at the uh, uh, from the end zone. Now, watch this down block. This is a great block by Marcus Gilbert. And also, this is a great block. This is a great block on Geno Atkins. This is going to be a great block on uh, uh, by uh, uh, Ramon Foster. He's going to cut him off, and, and we're going to watch these guys pull off. But keep your eye on this block. Uh, by uh, Rosie Nix. It's kind of fun to watch. At the snap of the ball, watch Rosie. Cho you talking about chopping wood? There he is. Now, great block right there. That's a great block. 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 And now you're off to the races. And I love it. I absolutely love it. So the next play that we're going to take a look at is Juju's almost touchdown. And uh, when you watch this, you're going to see right here, James Washington is going to run a hook, and uh, Vance McDonald's going to run an out cut, and Juju is going to outside release, and he's going to run, and as he angles, he's going to angle closer to the sidelines, uh, and Ben is going to put the ball right on the money, uh, and uh, he does a great job of going up and taking it away from, uh, uh, from Denard. So at the snap of the ball, Oh, there we go. Uh, Ben's calling an audible. There he goes. He's got it. Now that now he's going outside. He's on Darquez Denard. This is Drake Kirkpatrick on James Washington. And watch how he comes over the top right there. That is a great catch. He, now that now to be quite honest with you, Darquez Denard is in a perfect position to, to intercept this ball. But Juju is so aggressive. And to quote uh, Mike Tomlin, he's a combat receiver, a combat catcher, and that's what he does. He goes up and gets that ball, takes it away from him, and I, I kind of thought touchdown. that was a touchdown. Yeah, I thought it was a touchdown. I thought he fell into the end zone, but, you know, he saw it uh, better than I did, and, uh, and not, right now they're talking about it. He said, and, and Denard got hurt. Now watch this. This is very, the, the, what makes this happen is the pickup right here. So right now, uh, they're going to run a twist. They're, they're actually bringing six guys. And so Hubbard is going to go up this way, and uh, uh, and here comes Geno Atkins, and Dunlop is going to, we used to call this a 3U game. On this side, we're going to run a Mike Me with uh, Lawson's going to go inside, and Preston Brown is going to come outside. Watch the way the Steelers pick up this blitz it, and this stunt. It is uh, textbook. At the snap of the ball, uh, Ben's also calling for the, uh, he's calling for it. Now, right there, boom, look at this. The, this is the twist right now. Great punch by Marquise, great punch by David DeCastro. And right now, Marcus Gilbert is waiting. We'll take a look at it thoroughly. And now, look at that. That is what you call a clean pocket with six guys rushing. And Ben has plenty of time to throw the ball. 
and does a great job of getting it in the hands. All right, the last play we're going to take a look at is the touchdown uh, that won it for us. Uh, and so I, I love this right here. So um, AB's coming in motion. Here is Justin Hunter. Now, uh, uh, Tony McRae is on Justin Hunter, and he is going to jam him. And everyone's saying that this was an illegal pick. It wasn't because when Tony McRae jams Justin Hunter, all bets are off. And he jams him at the line of scrimmage. And so what AB is going to do is he's going to run the slant. Uh, on this side, Vance uh, McDonald is going to run a go route. And on this, and it, from the slot, he's going to run a slant as well. Now, this, now the uh, Bengals are bringing an all-out blitz, but we're going to take a look at the, uh, uh, at the route that, 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 that the AB runs right here. Now, one of the things that Tony McRae, his mistake was he should have jumped to the inside. He's in man coverage on AB. He should have jumped to the inside as soon as he caught, saw AB coming here, but he didn't. Uh, and that cost uh, them the game. It probably would have cost them the game anyways. And now he's off to the races. Uh, Justin Hunter pushed him for a little bit. Uh, I think uh, if they would have called that, I would have said that was extremely ticky-tacky. Now watch this. All right. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys. You know how many guys are coming? All of them. You've got the uh, uh, Carl Lawson on the outside, Flegelum. Uh, the strong safety right there, upfield, blitz by uh, uh, Vontez Burfick. He's Mike, and Vincent Ray's the will. So this is a, a Mike, Will, strong safety blitz. But watch the way these guys pick it up. And Ben does a great job of right now. Great job. Now, Vontez Burfick almost falls off to there. I, you know what I mean? But the ball is off, and, uh, and there you go. Great job. Great side adjustment by Ben and A.B., and that's what you call it. So as, as, you know, that's why we love A.B. Because no matter what happens, no matter if he's not making many catches early in the game, when the game's on the line, you put the ball into his hands, he's going to win it for you. I think it was Ramon or Gil, one of your O-linemen after the game. We know he'll start slow, but when he gets hot, he's hot and he stays hot. Right, so and, hot and, at the right time, right? Hotter than a $2 pistol. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for Chalk Talk, but we still have more coming up on Steelers Live. The good, the bad, and the ugly. We'll be right back. From the first, um, the second play of the game, I think, he, the first read wasn't there. We just, um, to me, when, when things like that happen, that's, um, that's O-line protecting. No sacks on the road against a really good pass rush, that's that's kudos to them. All right, a win is a win, but we're going to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly. And because Ben had to talk about the O-line, we're going to throw <laughs> you a softball touch. You can have the good. You can talk about the O-line. You know, Missy, Ben had enough time to order a pizza and wait for it to be delivered. I mean, that's how good the offensive line. That's two weeks in a row, no sacks. They're opening the holes for... Uh, 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 for James Conner, and on this very set on Thursday, I said this, if the Steeler offensive line block uh, Geno Atkins and Carlos Dunlop, they're going to win the game. And that's what they, exactly that. Geno Atkins, who came in with six sacks and probably 20 pressures, uh, he was shut out. He had one assisted tackle, no sacks, no hits on the quarterback, uh, whether it was David the Castro, or it was Pounce when he was on the nose, or whether it was uh, Ramon Foster, they all did a great job. Carlos Dunlop, who came in with four sacks, you know, it was like he was glued to uh, Marcus Gilbert. He couldn't get off the block. Uh, I'm just very impressed. They set the tone running the ball. They set the tone, pass blocking, and they dominated. I will take the bad, and unfortunately, I'm going to give this one to Steelers cornerback Artie Burns. We know that they've been dealing with a rotation at that yeah. spot opposite of Joe Hayden for the past few games, but that easy touchdown to Tyler Boyd to end the second half labs, I know you'll get into that in a little bit, but when he was benched in the fourth quarter, you could tell it really got to him. I think the bye week is definitely going to be good for Artie Burns maybe to decompress a little bit. Obviously, when you're a first-round pick, there's a lot of pressure on you, and he's set, he has said in recent weeks that it's been hard dealing with the up-and-down play that he's had more bad plays than not, obviously because of the rotation. But 
He was on the bench by himself while the defense was out there. And of all people, it was Antonio Brown, who has got a lot of criticism recently, who went up to him and said, hey, stand up. Your, your team's out there. Your unit. Cheer for them. And we'll see what happens with Artie after the bye week. Labs? I always get the ugly. I'm starting to get a compliment. Blame the producer. <laughs> Blame the producer. You know, I'm sure it has nothing to do with the, the way that I look. Um, but I, I just want to give you some stats here. Uh, I thought that the Steelers' defense played pretty well throughout the game. However, it seemed to be a different unit once we got into the uh, inside two minutes or almost inside two minutes each of the two halves. Now, the Bengals' total offense for the game was 275 yards on two drives, one at the end of each half, both of them yielding touchdowns. They gained 119 of those 275 yards. That meant the whole other time they managed 156. Andy Dalton had 229 yards passing, but 101 of those yards came uh, on those last uh, drives in each of the end of the first half. Um, I didn't think that the Steelers really went after Andy Dalton in a way similar to the way they went after uh, Matt Ryan, um, but uh, it, it was, I don't know, it was just too easy for the Bengals. I mean, on the first one, at the end of the first half, Dalton was five for five, in the second half, um, he was five for eight and one, on, one for one on third downs. Uh, but, you know, as Ben told the offensive linemen after Joe Mixon crossed the goal line, they scored too soon. Yeah. And so maybe it turned out to be a good thing uh, that the Steelers' defense allowed that, at least the one in the second half, allowed that touchdown as quickly as they did because, as Tunch said, uh, gave the master uh, enough time to ply his craft. All right. Thanks to Labs and Tunch for joining me today on Steelers Live, a Victory Monday edition. No Coach Tomlin press conference this week due to the bye week. The team is practicing, however, on Tuesday and Wednesday, and we'll be back here tomorrow at 4 p.m. for a recap. Thanks for joining us.